Yay. Hi, I think I'm live. <laughs> Hi guys, I hope you're doing well. It is a yet again another Monday night. So um, we're going to be doing a three hour session starting at 7.30 until 10.30 tonight, um, which is going to be plenty of time for us to get pretty deep into Photoshop. We're going to be animating in Photoshop. Um, I The last two videos that I've done, the first one was animating in Procreate. The second one was working in Photoshop, but it was uh, just Photoshop's regular animation tool kit. Um, and I spent two hours complaining about how I couldn't get one of my animation extensions working. And I've got really good news for you guys today. I managed to get that extension going so I am so relieved I am so incredibly happy I think it's going to be really good and really fun um, I think you guys are going to learn something um, so I guess let's just get into it <laughs> so here we are here's my here's my whole screen um, I I was really concerned that I wasn't gonna get um, and I'm just all working in time and I was sweating bullets. So I'm incredibly, incredibly happy that this is going to be working. Um, this is a really, really powerful extension. Um, just from the outright, um, if you open up, go to window extensions and in Dassault, this is, Ooh, I just, I just took it away. Um, this is the, the toolkit toolbar that you are going to get. Now I did mention that I was having severe difficulties trying to get this extension to work. Um, ever since Adobe went to CC, I have found difficulties getting my extensions working. Um, so if you are having problems as well, um, feel free to message me, um, directly about that. Um, it, it took Beningling. So I'm not gonna get into it. Um so anyway, we are in Anam de Saint. Let me let me let me turn let me turn let me turn around. So we're in Anam de Saint, and this is just a um a basic I am like seriously constantly having like allergies. Stop, please stop. Do you want up up? Let's say hi to everybody first. This is my dog Yoki. She's very unsociable, um, so the fact that she even wants to be on camera right now is really nice. Hi, baby. Hi. Hi. Okay, mommy needs to do some drawings now. Is that okay? Can mommy do drawings? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we have our basic Photoshop screen open. Um, also, lol, my like face keeps disappearing. So maybe let me let me just adjust that really quickly because it, it this is going to bother me. So bear with me for one second. Let me just adjust this because if it's bothering me, I know it's gonna be bothering someone else. Oh, it's a little bit better. Okay. I feel like, I feel like that's better. That's like so much more tolerable than what I had it at. Okay. Cause I keep like seeing it like disappear and it was just like, girl, can we not? Okay. So anyway, here we are. We're in Photoshop. We're going to be animating. We're going to be using the NM Descent extension. Um, there's a whole bunch of buttons available. We're going to go over what they are. So, um, this first button, and usually you want to work from like left to right when you're working with NM Descent. Um, it's, it's a very brilliantly built out extension. So, um, he's really thought of everything. So first button is going to open your frame animation. Your second button is going to open your timeline frame rate, which is 24. That's totally fine. Um, the next button is your canvas size. I like working in squares because a lot of what I'm animating is a square shape. So we're going to be doing 2000. Oh God. Uh, we're going to do 2000 by 2000. And then this last button is save. You always want to like build your, your canvas out. So we're going to do bunny, doing a bunny animation today. Um, these next buttons are um, your frames. Oops, there's 
So you'll notice that it is opening in a very different view than we were working in last time. Uh, so this first button is, um, you're basically creating a new frame every, every time you um, press that button. So if I move my cursor over here and then I hit one, it um, moves it over here to the end. So um, it doesn't matter where your cursor is, it's gonna go to the very, very end of the animation. Um, so uh, if you guys remember from last week's um, video, I was talking about um, key pose to straight ahead. Um, this is some version of that. Um, also, we have basically uh, a two frame. So um, also uh, we were talking about last week that we can um, run on ones and we can run on twos, we can run on four, sixes, eights, so on and so forth. So what that's telling you is if you're running on ones, that image is being held once. If you're running on twos, that image is gonna be held twice and so on and so forth. Um, so that's why you have that. This button is, I forgot what this button is. Oh, I think this button is just duplicating whatever your last command was. So we're gonna create one. Yeah, so it, it's literally just duplicating whatever it is you just did. And then the, um, the trash bin is going to delete um, whatever frame you have selected. Um, this button is something. I haven't worked in Anne Dessant in some time, so um, you guys are gonna have to bear with me. I'm assuming I have to select a couple of these. What? He, and he doesn't have an overlay of what that is, so and I can't remember off the top of my head. So I'll try my Facebook. Let me um, let me quickly look this up. And then the saw buttons. I like seriously cannot remember for the life of me what each button does. Like literally every time I use a new program, I'm like, how do I use this program? Lifewire.com. Exporting. Mm, no. I want, I want his, thank you. This is what I wanted. Video overview, thank you. Um, something I really like about his extension is that he does these videos of like, hey, um, this is how you use my my stuff, um, which for a lot of people um, is incredibly useful, you know, like. Yeah, so um, this is why I don't really recognize the panel very well is because it used to be, you could see on uh, one point, 1.01 on the left hand side everything was like labeled um but on 2.00 it's it's not so i'm like struggling to remember those no. i'm like just totally struggling to remember what this used to be i want to say because to me that looks like onion skins. I'm pretty sure this is onion skin. Yeah, yeah, okay. So these two buttons here are onion skin. Um, and then this button next to it, that's going to tell you what your onion skin um, information is going to be. So last week I was talking about like how important your onion skinning is. When you look at old school animation, um, you see those guys flipping the paper. Well, that's so that you can see the frames that are before and ahead of the drawing that you're doing. So if we do an onion skin count of, let's say, I usually do three. Three before and three after, frame spacing one, blend mode multiply. So what that means is this drawing that I have here, I'm just gonna draw a circle and then draw a circle here, and draw a circle here. So now if we scrub through this, we can see that onion skin working. Um, so this is one of the reasons I really love working with Anne Dassault is because um, your onion skinning options are like, oh, ah, amazing heaven. And if I wanted it to be just one before and one after, then that's totally an option for me as well. You can change the opacity levels of your onion skins. It's amazing i highly recommend it um if i remember correctly um this is a labeling system for your um for your keys this is 
more important for stuff like um, if you're doing like follow through animations. So say for example, you have a character walking or running, and we're gonna experiment a little bit with this because we're gonna have a character with bunny ears. Um, it helps to have stuff color coded um, to their own thing. Um, and you'll notice here the color, there's a color overlay, which is something that we did last week um, for the sparkly poo that goes over the Disney castle. Um, a color overlay is basically just going to like put whatever color that you specify, or you could also have it be a gradient as well um, if you really wanted it to. But then um, you are invoking the wrath of you're invoking the wrath of breaking um, the extension. So try try not to get too crazy with that. If you wanna if you wanna use that button, it's there and it and it's great and it's wonderful. Um, we're not gonna use it from the out from the get go right now. Um, this this button here after the red, green, blue is going to clear whatever whatever that label was. So if you had it green, if you had it green, um, you could clear it. Um, I believe you could also label these individually. Um, so um, it's really good marking for um, your keys as well. We're going to clear all of that. Fine. I believe this is now moving your keys around. Yeah, it is. And the thing that's really nice about this button, it, these, these buttons here, is that it'll, um, you can bind it to your keyboard so then you can start thumbing through your animation. Um, this is basically Anybody that's working in After Effects or um, Adobe Premiere, if you take a look at my timeline, you'll notice that it's getting bookended. Um, so this is basically the space in which you are playing your footage. So if you're looking at three seconds, three minutes of animation, however long it is, but you want to isolate four frames of that three minutes, um, you can isolate it using these end caps without deleting animation. Um, I believe these last buttons are comments. I don't know the HTML button, so I can't speak eloquently on that. Don't also know what that button does. And then K is, I don't know what K does. I think it's key. I'm pretty sure it's key. But I haven't used it, so I'm not going to speak eloquently on that. So cool, that is basically an homme de sang. Um, again, I am a huge, 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 huge fan of, of this program, or of this program, of this extension. I find it making my animation much easier. So um, anyway, we're going to get started with a new animation. Um, 24 frames per second is fine. I'm going to zoom in, and I actually did a little sketch of what I wanted to animate today. I um, wanted to also show off um, some of the capabilities that you have in Procreate. So um, this is a file that I created in Procreate. You can see that it's living on my iPad right now. Um, all you have to do to um, export into Photoshop, if you're on the Mac, um, you're going to basically, there's like a a monkey wrench, you click on monkey wrench, you go to share, and then you have options for how to share the image. You're gonna hit PSD, it's exporting and it's thinking. And then you have a whole bunch of options on how to export. Um, my Mac comes up, so now my Mac's like, hey, you have a file coming through from your iPad. And I'm like, that's super awesome. Let's save that to downloads. And then it shows up in my downloads and it shows up as a PSD. And then I could take a look at it. So what I really wanted to do was I wanted to do this sort of little um, little bun bun girl kind of going back and forth. Um, and uh, let's see. Oh, these are some sketches that I did earlier. So we're going to duplicate these layers into that first file. Cool. and then we're going to start um, adding frames in. So um, I have a couple of bits of information that I put in here. I think for now I don't want the color bit. I know that I want my animation to look like this. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw my first keyframe. All 
that I'm concerning myself with is sort of the character's form. So you'll notice I'm not drawing in the hair. I'm just drawing in um, the head, the neck, the body. We're gonna go in and add another frame. And I want it, this is basically the other keyframe that I'm drawing now. Really paying for not warming up today. So I'm a little, a little cold going into this drawing. So I'm not really on top of my game. Oh, interesting. So something here is broken and it's putting it both on that drawing. That's totally fine. That's a really easy fix. I think it's because I had my my um, timeline on that section. Cool. Now we're going to add another frame. I'm just making sure that my frames are in between the two. Um, so now we're creating an in-between. So uh, last week I was talking about how you start with keyframes and then you have an in-between in-between. Um, and your in-between is what's going to give your um, animation personality. So, um, so I want the head to sort of snap as she comes over. So maybe this in-between will have her... So her neck and her chest, she's moving in this direction. So her neck and her chest are leading the animation, the, the movement, but her head is gonna drag a little bit. And we're gonna cheat it a little bit farther. So instead of having this it, the, it like dead smack dab in the center, we're going to have the center line a little bit over to my left. And then the head is going to drag. a bit like that and then let's turn off onion skins so you see oops I have these backwards here here there we go so you see how that head is going to start drying as we come across 
Um, one of the reasons I really like working in Photoshop to animate is I find that I have a lot more control over what I'm doing. Um, again, I've been using NM to saw for probably 10 years. Um, so that, that has a lot to do with it as well. Now we have this character um, going back and forth, right? Um, sometimes there's no harm in basically cheating. And um, either we could copy this whole frame and then paste it, paste the art into it. And we'll just flip this image. Uh, we just want to flip. One. Am I like totally having a moment right now? One. I'm totally having a moment. Girl, get it together. Okay, it's because I had selected everything. Let's come back. Here we go. Okay, and now we're going to flip it. And then this will be a looping animation. God, why is this so long? Actually, I don't need either of these in here. And now it's going super, 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 super fast. Um, but that's okay. Um, the cool thing about NM Descent is if you select your um, frames, you could um, lengthen them in time, I think. Yeah, by dragging it out. So let's hold it for four frames each. Right? One, two, three, four. 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 And I believe I believe there's a button for that, but I don't remember what the button is. Is it this? It is. So the plus minus is what's going to extend the length of time for your animation. So now when you play it, we have a character going back and forth. Pretty, pretty easy squeezy lemon squeezy. Um, that being said, I have to use the bathroom. <laughs> Even though I just started this video, I, I forgot to pee. So let me take a pee break. I will be back in five minutes. So I'll see you guys at eight o'clock. Be right back. <laughs> Okay, 
sorry about that. I, the P, the P situation is real, you guys. Sorry about that. Um, I drink too much water, I think. Okay, so we have four frames of animation and they're looping okay. Um, so here's, here's some of the things that I'm noticing outright. Um, her hips are kind of going all higgly wiggly all over the place. Hi, Chicky! Yay! Thank you. Um, if you look at sort of where her hips are anchored, they're all over the place. So, um, this is a good opportunity to just start thinking about those sorts of things. Um, one way to fix it is to just start moving your keys around. like I'm getting like whiplash looking at her. I'm gonna rotate this a little bit. So since I'm just thumbing through all of my frames, it's going to be a lot easier for me if I don't have to scroll super hard. Okay, this one here. So one way to kind of manage that, um, that that I find really helpful is if I just set my frame rate to like four. That way when it's um, running, it's not running at breakneck speed. Girl, what? Oh, I see. I think the thing, the problem with doing that is it compresses all of your keys. So um, just make sure that if you if you choose to do that and get all crazy like I did, um, there you go. That um, you just adjust for that. Make sure that your key length is like the correct key length. So you'll notice we have a little bit of hang time here. So it's going like. Kind of smooth, but then it's like ka thunk, ka thunk, ka thunk, ka thunk, ka thunk. Do you see that? Um, I think that's just the nature of it looping. Um, ooh, I didn't know that that was an option. Um, I want this to be exactly a frame long, though. Hold on. I see. Girl, what the fuck? I blame, I only have myself to blame for this. All this like weird frame stuff that's happening, it's because I messed with it earlier and now I'm just paying for it. So I'm just gonna go into frame mode. And M. Dessant still works if you go into frame mode as well. So if you find that you're like having the same like frustrations as me, um, know that you can go into frame mode and it'll still work. So we're going to go into not one second. Let's do point two. There we go. Okay, cool. So we have that. Let's put an onion skin in. Or not. Maybe yeah, you can't do that if you're in if you're in this mode. Never mind. I've officially I've screwed everything up. Ignore.
ignore everything I said for the last two minutes because the new version of Anne Dasson does not let me do that. So don't do what I just did. Anyway, going back and forth, looking at it, not feeling, not feeling cute about it. I totally regret like getting all crazy with my with my frames. I'm just gonna let it run. It's normal 24 frames per second rate, and I'm just gonna figure it out from there. Anyway. So I still feel like we have that like little kathunk moment. It's like dun, 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 dun. Um, and I think that that's just sort of the nature of the pose. And also where our um, in between is. So I have suspicions if I do that it's gonna feel different. So you'll see how um, changing the position of your in-between is going to radically change the um, the pattern or the beat of your animation. Um, moving it just a little bit is going to have a huge effect on it. It's going to effectively change the motion of, of your animation. So these are all things to just keep in mind as you work. Um, let's edit our frames to five before and five after. We want max opacity to be at 20, minimum opacity at 5%. And then working in onion skin, save often. I found putting onion skin on and moving stuff around will F up your file and it'll crash it. So um, just keep that in mind as you work. Yeah, and I think I really just think that part of this is the pose of this head is not a cute look. So let's tilt it just a little bit more. Oh, here's the other thing. If you lasso tool and start rotating things within a frame, that will also crash Photoshop. So um, these are all things to keep in mind as you, as you animate. Cool, I'm feeling moderately happy with it. So let's add in um, some in-betweens. Turn our onion skin back on. So here, this is our first image, our first drawing. We're moving into this drawing here. So there's a whole bunch of ways that I can go about deciding what to do with this movement. Um, I think so here's the edge of the ear here, and here's the edge of the ear here. The ear is going to travel to there in the frame after that. Um, so I'm thinking about sort of the spacing and the timing. I want a little bit of an ease out. Um, so what that means is I want this frame that I'm drawing right now, I want it to feel like it's closer to the first drawing than the drawing that's preceding it. So maybe it's a third of that distance. And actually, what if there's a lot of lag in the head? So maybe it's the chin that's coming back first. There's that shoulder. I don't mind having the shoulder kind of move across at the same time. Maybe the shoulders leading it. And then here's the neck. Let's turn off that onion so you guys can see the drawing. 
So you can start to see how putting that in between in is starting to give you some information about what's going on in this character's body. So that's kind of like the basics of um, animation, anim de song, um, and sort of the flow that um, we're going to be working in. Um, I'm not particularly happy with how much my animation is moving around. I um, I don't want to have this sort of floating rib cage in air. Um, I actually want to build out what her body looks like. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to start over and we're going to start to animate this, but um, in a way that's a little bit more grounded. <laughs> so let's get started. So um, I had that character model that I really liked. There she is. And so first things first is I'm just going to break down her shapes. And let's bring this city down just a little bit. So this is sort of the shape of her head. Um, I think if you broke this head up in half, right there, that's where her eyes are going to go. There's the center of her head. Um, between the center of her, of, of pretty much where her eye line is and her chin, we're going to have a third of the way is going to be the nose, and then another third of the way is going to be the mouth, and then halfway down the forehead, we'll have her bangs come down, right? And then I think for her neck, we'll have her neck about the same width as, as her eyes. And let's bring that distance down, the same distance between the chin and the bottom of the nose. So this distance and this distance is the same. And then we'll have her rib cage, which will be rib cages. Um, usually you want to have your sternum, the bottom of your sternum, which is um, this, this hard bone that's right here. Um, usually one head down is where your sternum lands from your chin down. Uh, we'll have that sort of midsection torso and then her hips will be something like that. Let's make her ears about the same length as her head. Actually, that's a bit too long. Let's do two thirds. Did I say wings or ears? I feel like I said wings. If I said wings, I meant ears. <laughs> so that's one ear. And then the other ear. Oops. And then let's have the shoulders. I think elbows should come down to about here. So her boobs would be we're not drawing boobs today, but that, that would be that. And then her hair, um, the back of her hair is going to fall um, probably to where the base of her neck is. And then we'll round that out. And we'll have another sort of puff space here, puff space there. So you'll notice I'm keeping everything really simple and I'm trying to keep the proportions as like reasonable as possible. 
The reason for that is um, once you start moving these characters around, <laughs> it's going to get really easy to lose track and lose control of all of these different shapes. Um, I myself am not a professional animator, so um, this is going to be a challenge for me having been as, as rusty as I am to even animate this for you guys. So here is our character. I actually kind of want her hair to be What kind of hair do you want? So we'll have that here as a reference. Get rid of that. Maybe do this at 20%. And then, um, oops, sorry. I think I just created a new file, which I did not want to do. Um, not save. Not save. Not save on my page. Save that. Okay. Um, what we want to do is we want to create a new frame. So basically everything's going to be radiating from her hips. I don't want her hips going all over the page. Like, oh yay! Age is back. Hello, age. Welcome. Um, I want every everything radiating from her hips. So it's it's her hips that are going to be staying still and the rest of her body is just going to go around it. It'll make, it'll make sense in a second, I promise. So um, on this first first frame, um, we're going to draw our first key and that is going to be of this position. So um, I know her hips are not going to move. I know I want her body sort of tilted this way. And then have a little bit of, of that follow through in the head. Um, so I, I like to cheat. Um, I find it much easier and much faster than like having to draw everything out. So I'm going to essentially trace this head form. Move it over. Or rotate it. And this is ultimately what they do in um, TV shows nowadays. 2D um, animated shows are going to have all these different pieces on different layers and they're going to be moving them around at different rates. Um, so, so yeah. Okay, anyway, so we know that um, the character's eyes run along that center line. And I know that I want her eyes closed. And we know that um, the bottom of the nose is about a third of the way down. Another third of the way down is going to be the mouth. And we know that this space here, halfway down, is going to be her hairline. And I'm not animating the hair. The hair is going to have its own follow-through animation. So that's going to be on its own layer. And I think I want to have just a little bit of that sort of like you know, like raise to her shoulders like that. And it's going to be the same thing with the hair. We're not going to animate the, uh, the hair and the, and the ears. We're not going to animate right now. So now we're going to go on to our next frame. And let's turn onion skin back on. So this is basically just a mirror. Um, yay! Thank you, Age. <laughs> um, this is basically a mirror of, of what our last key was. Um, so we are going to follow the same sort of distance over the side.
So I think what might look interesting is if we start straightening out the uh, the side, the side of her of her body. So as she's coming over, her um, that line is going to start straightening, and then the other one is going to start crunching. I think it's just going to look more handsome. And we we have very little of that here, so we're just going to go in and do that. Okay, I want that crunch here, and I want it to straighten out. There. So that neckline coming up. And then again, I'm just going to cheat and no, I'll stop it. Um, one thing that's really frustrating is if you have a random layer that's imported, it'll be like, yay, Dag is here, hello! It'll be like ridiculously big. It'll, it's like 21 frames long, and I, I don't want it to be 21 frames. It's like not that important to me right now. Um, so it's, it's, it's some problems. Good luck, Sylvie. Good luck. Um, so again, we're gonna we're just gonna cheat and trace because I'm not I'm not deforming this shape at all right now. I'm just going to bring it over. I know I want to have a bit of a tilt there. And again, we know that the center of this form is going to have the eye line. A third of the way down is going to be the bottom of the nose. Another third of the way down is the mouth. Halfway up through from um, the eye line up is going to be where that hairline is. And I know that I want to have just a little bit of, I want her shoulders to be raised, so we're gonna indicate that. And now that I feel like I have a really decent sense of sort of her anatomy, um, I'm gonna get rid of that, um, of that drawing because I just don't think I need it right now. Now we're going to start doing our in between our um, our in between animation, going from um, from the save from the right to the left. So I think I want to have the head dragging like that. Third. It's actually going to turn the other way. That center line. Right? Yeah? Wait. I'm trying to think. To like watch myself in the video. No, I guess we could just keep it that way. We won't do any rotation for this animation right now. But I want her body to lead this motion. And then let's actually have this drag a bit more and turn more. Sternum. Maybe that elbow is going to come out just a little bit as you come across. And center line is going to be the eye line. A third of the way down is the bottom of the nose. Another third of the way is going to be the mouth. You guys are going to get really sick of hearing that. <laughs> but essentially, as you start to animate, you will um, start to think about these things because you need to be really familiar with your character as you animate them. Um, it allows for you to draw them better and more accurately. And if you have an understanding of what their proportions are, your drawings and your animations are going to be better as a result. Um, 
I'm lazy and I just like to cheat, especially for something like this, because we're just doing like a really simple animation. Um, what I did is I just duplicated the layer I just made. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it. Transform, flip horizontal. Flip. And that one's going to look here. left and then so you can see it's going so from there I'm going to turn this layer back on remember I was saying that we're going to do the um the hair and the, whatchamacallit, the hair and the ears separately. So that's what we're going to do right now. So we're going to create a new layer. That. So with the hair, the hair is going to have like basically a delay of a frame. So even though her head is going in this direction, and if, if she was just hanging there, her hair would be going down. Um, she's actually in the middle of motion, so her hair is going to be lagging behind her. And then here, the hair is going to actually flip in the other direction. And then here, the hair is like still lagging behind. And then now that we've flipped and we're going in the opposite direction, the hair is going to go this way. Let's turn off onion skin. Let's spaz out. If there's like a, a fast way for me to just like make everything hold on and save because I feel like if I just set this no it won't do it for some reason it like compresses it okay. all right yeah. So if you want to make it longer, you have to like literally do it by hand, which is a total pain. Here, one, two, three, through here, one, two, three, through here, three. Okay. So you can see now as her hair is going back and forth, there's drag on her hair. Or as her body's going back and forth and her head's going back and forth, there's drag on the hair. Yep. So this is where this sort of stuff starts to become really useful. There we go. Um, you could start setting the colors for, um, for your different layers. 
and that'll let you see sort of what's going on in your empty shadow. So I think between here and here, I want to have a frame. I don't know why it's giving me two frames there is beyond me. Let's onion skin that. So I think we want to cut cut the difference here. So I'm going to like that. So there's a whole lot of stuff now I have to keep track of, right? It's not just like, oh, like the head, the body. It's also like sort of the angle and the tilt of the head. It's um, the location of this point, the angles of those points. Where's her neck? Do I want her neck to like be farther over here? Because again, we are are we are we cheating it so that her body is like leading this motion? And then if we have some drag on that shoulder as it starts to come out, so you see this is sort of the elbow here, and here's the elbow here. So the elbow is actually going to be somewhere in between on this frame. And then the hair form. The hair is actually in this place in a transition period between being far to one end and swapping over to the other. Turn onion skin off because that was giving me a bit of a headache seeing all those lines. Just to make sure. So let's just play it. So as you start adding more of your frames in, it's going to start running smoother and smoother. So I'm going to get rid of frame here, frame here. We can add a frame <laughs> here and here. Because I want just I want it to be a little bit softer. And we're going to edit our onion skins to be two before and two after because it's starting to get a little confusing. So we're going from this key, we're going from this frame to this frame. See that? And I think I want Something like just 
platform. So with the hair, I almost want the hair to like keep moving in that direction. Just a little bit more before it's it like whips into the other direction. So let's just see how that looks. So now we're really starting to feel that drag, right, of the hair where it's like, whoosh. So this is where, and for me, I've always loved follow through. I've always found it really interesting and fascinating because you have a body in motion in one way, but then there's stuff moving this way before it decides to, to follow it. And I, I just find that to be like, the fun part of animating. So you can see here, shoop, whoop, whoop. So let's have another frame here. It's actually, one. So let's turn onion skins back on. Let's have let's have the head leading just a little bit more here. One third, one third, that's the nose, that's the mouth, that's the eye, the eye. And then maybe this shoulder's already over here. I don't know. Let's let's see how it looks. Maybe that'll be in between. And then here we have the hair. The hair is like really trailing behind on this one. Turn that onion skin off. Look at it again. Yeah, so we start to have like a lot more fun and play with how the character is going to start to look once we um, start experimenting with sort of the timing of our animation. Let's see that. And maybe here the hair is going to start to slow down. Here you go. And then the hair is going to go up before it comes snapping back. So let's maybe get rid of two frames here. Add two there. Add two here. Turn that onion skin back on. So maybe her head and everything isn't moving that much. And then we can maybe start having, actually, let's rotate her a little bit. And then maybe we could do something fun, and that is kind of a, a, like, a like a blur. Um, so when you have a really fast motion, um, you have the character sort of like blurring between two keys. 
And so there's a bunch of different ways that you could do that. Um, I find it to be really fun because you're like, Um, you're like blurring this character together almost. And it, it looks a little funky, but once once you have it in animation, it, it it makes a lot more sense. So don't don't worry. I know it looks weird. I promise I, I promise it's gonna be okay. <laughs> So having that little blur once it's moving it makes more sense but when you look at it like individually you're like like what is that um, but if you really look at some of the best animation in anime in daytime cartoons at Disney and Pixar they have these sort of blur blend frames. Um, you'll see them a lot in Warner Brothers, especially like old school Warner Brothers. When there's a lot of movement, you'll see a whole lot of this stuff and it, it makes for some really fun sort of animation. Let's get our onion frames going so that we can do a lot. And then maybe here, this will be sort of this weird blend of hair. All right, let's see how it looks, shall we? So you'll notice as you're moving your frames around um, and you start animating stuff, that, that quick little like stutter blur frame, um, you won't notice it at all. Um, the thing of it is, is that since we have a character kind of moving um, pretty staccato backwards, uh, it, it can look a little weird um, if there's no reason for your character to be doing that. So I would recommend if you're doing any sort of um, looping animation like this um, to be very picky about where you use it um, and keep in mind that it can be really drawing to the eye but um, it is if you use it effectively and you, and you use it well it's it makes your stuff look super super cool so you guessed it we're gonna actually get rid of all that hard work but I just more so just wanted to show you guys that that was just an option less than um, that actually being something that I wanted to do. So what I wanted was, since we have this sort of slowing down here, I wanted to have some hang time. Maybe of her kind of slowly coming back and the hair going in the opposite direction before she starts moving the other direction. Or even of, of her face just staying here. Um, something that I've noticed as I trace things, um, I tend to trace outside of my lines. Um, so my stuff eventually starts looking bigger and bigger as I go. So that's something to keep in mind if you are tracing on top of a frame like I am right now. Be sure that you're tracing inside of it rather than outside of it and that'll really help with so I think I want the hair to swing finally this way but let's turn onion skin off See how that looks. So it's starting to feel much better, right? 
and we really start to feel that hair moving around. The, the, the snap to this position though is, is a bit of a, uh, a bit too much, I would say. So let's add two frames here. Oops. So let's I was drawing a flight. <laughs> so again, same thing. Let's have maybe the chin. Let's have the chin lead and we want it to ease out, which means that we want it to stick around. So if we're looking at the side of the cheek. We're looking at this line and that line. Rather than cutting this line in the center, we're going to cheat it and have it be about here. I actually want to rotate it and save because I know what rotating stuff in Photoshop does to my file, crashes it. <laughs> okay, so we have that center line. We know that the center line is where the eyes are. A third of the way down is going to be the bottom of the nose. Another third of the way is going to be the smile. Halfway down the forehead is going to be that hair part. Maybe we'll start crunching here. Nope, I lied. Let's have the rib cage lead. Have the shoulder lead a little bit more. As this shoulder maybe hangs at the elbow. Too much shoulder is moving, but the elbow is not. And then the neck, the neck is moving on the body. So the hair, let's have a little bit of stretch to the hair. It's really hanging back. Like that. And then moving on to the next frame. Now we're going to kind of split the difference. Maybe this elbow is starting to catch up. And again, the hips, everything's rotating from the hips, so the hips are not really moving. So everything's moving around the hips and coming from that anchor point. And maybe we were really finishing up that lag in the hair. The hair's starting to catch up. Turn off onion skin. It. So we can zoom out just a little bit. We can start to see our animation coming to life. So I think we're going to need to start doing a few more in betweens before we do the hands. I think I'd, it'd be fun if the hands were doing sort of this sort of movement. I like like dragging, I don't know, maybe maybe the same, I haven't decided, or maybe the opposite. Wait, hold on. Yeah, it's just gonna have its own 
its own rhythm. So it's better to have those sorts of things. And again, because you have different follow through, you want them to be on a different, um, on a whole different layer on its own whole timing. Okay, get those onion skins going again. So cut this down by a frame, add a new frame. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, what is happening? So I know that this is the frame I'm coming from. This is the frame I'm going to. So typically around this point, you're no longer um, having to worry so much about the, the acting um, at this point, say you've done like a whole scene and you've got like 60 frames um, and you've got all these in-betweens that need to be put in. The fall through on the hair is so cute. Thank you, Age. Um, at this point, your, your keys and your in-betweens are going to be what's driving all of the personality and all of the timing of your animation. Your in between your um your keyframe. What am I trying to say? The keys that go between your in betweens and your keyframes betweens are um are pretty much just like grunt work. And usually in a structure of uh, animation studio, the in betweener and um, the people that are responsible for like the the rest of the frames, um, they are usually junior animators and junior artists because they're they're learning under the tutelage of an animator and they're trying to figure out um, the business they're trying they're learning a lot about the, the acting and the timing and the best way to do that really is is from learning from somebody else somewhere somewhere about here. Yeah, and so the, this, the, this position is where this hair is going to go. It's going to go from one side to the other. So you're basically you're starting to split the difference between those keys, between those frames, excuse me. See that? See how the hair is starting to move over? And I'm actually, let's have this draw just a little bit more. And this one will drag down since that's the direction we're moving from. This is me like all day long. <laughs> this is like literally all I do. Cool. And then same thing here. Um, we want to let's see. I feel like if 
her head is like not squishy enough here. There we go. So I feel like I need another frame here, a frame here, and it can get rid of this here. Because I feel like this gap is a little too big for me. This is sort of like. Looks a bit of a of a squash going on. Let's just see how this looks. And I know this arm is gonna be coming out. Oh god, I pressed spacebar. Um, I think that's the one thing that kind of sucks is um, spacebar is key bound for. Um, movement right it's the hand button so when you hold down space it goes and then you can move your thing around but spacebar is also play so um i accidentally hit play when i mean to be moving stuff around and it's a total pain in the butt that's okay it's not the end of the world so here's our hip here's our elbow shoulders hair. Let's have the hair drag just a little bit. Maybe not. I just like looked at the keys before it and it just, I don't think that the, the timing would be very good for that. Okay, turn off onion skins. You know the drill. We're done. Everyone can go. <laughs> um, we are now going to do the um, the ears. And the ears we're going to do on their own separate thing. So we're going to create a new thing, but then we're going to move it down here. And we'll see where we can do that and where I can do whatever I want. Just like that. Green. So I want my bun bun ears. I know that um, my bun bun ears are about um, two thirds of her of her um, of her head. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do straight ahead animation for it and just see see what happens. Oh oh Lord oh Lord stop please stop. <laughs> Let me change this to one before and one after. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna save because I feel like Photoshop's like, no, I don't want to do this. And I'm like, okay, well, please do so that I don't like have a heart attack right now. So maybe they start straightening out because we're losing a little bit of momentum. And then here, go like, ooh.
My bun bun ears are like flopping around everywhere. Maybe here they can kind of sort of be straight up. But then the momentum is going to carry them over. I'm going to like really quickly do all the rest of my hues because it's giving me a headache to try to keep going back and forth. Hi, Stinky. Start to flop. So right now they look like antennas. Yeah. Let's turn off onion skin so you guys can see that. <laughs> Actually looks really cute as antennas. <laughs> So you'll notice the floppier you make your, your shape. So like a pair of rabbit ears are gonna be like flippy floppy. So when you like when you whip them around, they're gonna be like <clears throat> but if they were pretty like straight hard on and they didn't have too much wiggle, they'd actually move with her head perfectly, if that makes sense. more like that. I realize just like how big I'm making them now. So with these, I don't mind that they're getting longer because they're kind of getting stretched out. But if you're making something super long because you're stretching it, you got to make sure that um, you're making it thinner as well. Um, and this is a principle of animation called squash and stretch. And that's what's going to start to make things feel like they're organic and give it like that really nice um, feel. Like I, it, there's, there's no other, it, it's, it's like the feeling of something, uh, even something like a metal pole um, hitting the ground, it's still going to have a little bit of squash and stretch to it because that's just sort of the nature of how we perceive things to be. Stinky, that's not a toy. Hi. Want up ups? Come here. Come here. Let's go up up. Okay, cool, cool. Well, then why are you being so distracted? <laughs> okay. And as I'm going, um, please don't be shy about like asking questions if if you're watching this on um, Twitch right now with me, because I I love answering questions. I love going back and like explaining to people why I made certain decisions. 
it um it really like challenges me and like really is like do you actually know what you're doing <laughs> and um it makes it makes me a, a better um artist as a result so if if there's ever like any confusion about what I'm doing like please please just ask So as you can see, animating is a very laborious task. Um, I'm actually getting really tired and sleepy working on it because I think it's kind of boring. Um, but it's challenging in its own rights in that there's so much that you're trying to keep track of. There's all these like things about like physics and, and just the way that we perceive things and, and motion and, and acting and then just trying to make stuff look good, making sure that it makes sense. Like there's just so much involved in, in making it look and feel good. stretch going on here or maybe it's starting to bounce back around here So let's turn off the colors for that, turn off the colors for this, oops, hold on, I'm just going to look at it. Feeling pretty okay about it. Maybe we could do some arms. Um, what are we doing on time? We're at 9 o'clock. I'm like exceptionally tired today. I had to get up really early because um, I had a doctor's appointment. And uh, long story short, everything's okay. I just um, I'm really, really, really tired because I had to get up really early and take care of that. There we go. Um, so I'm kind of wilting right now. So I'm sorry for that. Okay. Always save, <laughs> like double, triple save on everything. So you'll notice that here we have the animation. Uh, we have two, one, 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 two, one, one. Um, for the hands, we might not necessarily have to be running the hands at the same um, frame cadence if you don't want to. Um, so first let's just draw out our keys. I'm just drawing out the, the lower arms, the forearms. I have a tendency to make my hands too big, so I'm just trying to, I'm trying to monitor that right now. So I know that's one frame or one key. 
finish my other tea. Once we have our hands doing a little bit of follow through, let's please thank you all. No, I don't know why I did that. I don't know why I moved the wrist like that. I just realized that this entire video is just going to be of me, like, like, staring. Hi! You're being really annoying. I'm trying to work, and you just want love, I know. Up, up, come on. As I was saying. Oh, hi. Um, I feel like this whole video is just going to be of me, like, staring at my monitor, like, <laughs> it's just probably really boring for you guys. You want me to try to, to work like this, Stinkies? I could try. This is going to be very uncomfortable for both of us. I'm very, very uncomfortable. Very, very uncomfortable. You are in my armpit. You are literally in my armpit. You are literally, my, you are, bye. Get too crazy. I'm trying to think. Now let's have that kind of max out right here before we snap her wrist back. You'll notice that I'm just doing this like really rough and like not worrying too much about the uh about how it looks because I just I'm not sure if this is what I want to do with it even at this point. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna create. I'm gonna create all the frames I need for this animation. Is this 
again, driving me super crazy. Starting to catch up here. I don't like how hard this is like moving. Turn that onion skin on and just have a little bit it's like <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't like it. So maybe it's kind of squishing in as she's coming over. Everything's compressing. It's like super compressed. And as she pulls away, Maybe that arm starts to laugh. The trick is, is that I don't remember where my key was. At the beginning of this animation, so when we loop it, I have no idea what it's going to look like. It's not half bad. But now what it looks like is she's going... <laughs> so if I cover this, the right arm has a good feel of like... 
in, out, in, out, left, right, left, right. But the the other arm, her her right, my left, is like doing this, which is super ugly and does not look good. So I think if we just move them in unison, it's just it's gonna look a lot better. And even if that means that this this left hand that there's even it doesn't even move too much that's better than it waving around so dramatically that it becomes incredibly distracting Oh my god stop stop save <laughs> so this is one of the downsides of working in Photoshop just in general um, it, it can be very fickle and it'll start to do stupid annoying things even if you have an amazing Photoshop extension like NM Desson it'll just not want to listen to you So right now I have that arm kind of whipping into position. So I actually think here I want it more like that and here as well. I just think it looks cuter. Than the way that I have had it. That just looks infinitely cuter than what we had before. So something that I hadn't um, started building out was what does this character's arms look like? Um, so that's something that we're actually going to tackle right now. So you remember this from earlier. Um, I think having her arms her lower and upper arms the same length just for the sake of what we're doing right now. feels like the proportions that I'm doing for her hand is something like this. And then here's that thumb mask coming up. And we're just going to keep this layer on for the entire animation so that I could use it as a reference. And let's move it here and maybe even duplicate it. And then we'll click it here. Just so that I could see it on both sides of my screen as I'm. Um, cleaning up 
sort of what the hands look like because right now they are a sloppy mess. <laughs> The thing that's really nice about working in video groups is you could set your opacity to pretty low without the use of onion skinning. So that allows you the ability to start um, cleaning up anything or, um, or just being able to follow a very specific layer of your animation. So it's super boring. <laughs> I think this is the most boring video that you guys are going to watch me do because a lot of it is just me trying to figure out what stuff is supposed to look like, what the proportions are, or maybe it's the most interesting and it's the least annoying because I'm not talking a whole bunch. Oh, I'm like falling asleep. That doesn't make any sense. Wrists are not supposed to be that high up. Okay. I'm also looking at just like the forms. There's so much that is going to be involved in animating something as delicate as hands. And so it's super important to pay attention to how you're building them out and watching the curves. Oops. And it just becomes
like this is literally going to take me probably like an hour or two to just do the hands because there's so many little things involved. <coughs> To just do that one part so the for the purposes of what we're doing I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave them as is because I don't think I have the, the physical strength <laughs> to go through and animate all of that oh why is this turning red suddenly here what Let's see the right effects there we go and then everything back at 100. So now you can see that there's a whole bunch of different layers of animation um, that have different sort of physics applied to them, different um, patterns of patterns. Uh, this is what I mean, like I didn't get enough sleep so my brain is not working. <coughs> There's different rates at which everything is moving. So um, her hair is going to be moving at a different cadence than her bunny ears. Her bunny ears are floppier than her massive hair, so they're moving at a different rate. They're squashing and stretching, squashing and stretching at a different rate. Oh my god, I can't even speak properly. Um, so yeah, so this is pretty much it for animating in NM Dessin. Um, I cannot phrase it enough. I think this is an incredibly powerful um, Adobe extension for Photoshop. It is really difficult to install, so if you have any issues or any questions, please DM me on Instagram. My Instagram is up there somewhere, um, and I will help you figure it out because it was a huge, huge pain for, get, for me to get it to work on um, 2000cc. Um, so just putting that out there. If you want to experiment and you can't get it to work, just message me directly. Um, I hope that this was cool and interesting and fun. And I'm ending this video an hour early because I cannot even speak and I'm having a really hard time keeping my eyes open. So I hope you guys are doing well. I will see you Thursday afternoon at 12 p.m. from 12 to 2. We are going to be illustrating probably some anime stuff. So I think that's going to be really fun and cool. Okay guys, thanks for watching, bye! <laughs>